Lying 800 kilometers southeast of Manila on the southern tip of the Philippine Chiaga Island, General Luna is every vacationer's dream. A remote, exotic location with sugar-fine white beaches and crystalline seas, populated by warm, friendly locals. Surfers first discovered this place in June 1980. The small village is most renowned for Cloud Nine, considered by many within the surfing community to be the perfect wave. At present, the island is a draw for many foreigners, especially surfers. General Luna now hosts the Shiagao Surfing Cup, an international competition and a thriving tourist trade, encouraged by the town's mayor, Jaime Rosilion. Uh, this was a sleepy town before, until uh, the white man came along and then well, uh, help break it up. The first surfer who came to General Luna was an American of Cuban descent and an Australian. Uh, they came in here in 1980, way back in 1980. They say they were in search of a perfect wave. The name of the American was uh, Cuban descent. I forgot the name now, but the other one, the Australian, was uh, Steve Jones. Then uh, they were followed intermittently. And then uh, one day, a few years ago, maybe about seven, eight years ago, another American who introduced himself to me as uh, Max Walker came along and it was him who pinpointed what is now the famous Cloud Nine area. Stayed there, fasted, something was troubling him, and he died in there. I wanted to beat the record of Christ of not having eaten for 40 days. He did beat the record of Christ, but Christ survived. He did not. We did not know that that man was a legendary man. He founded another uh, surfing camp known uh, in the surfing world as Krajagan. And that is the beginning of that. We started coming in. Until now, it is now a world famous uh, surfing area. One surfer who has made the island his home is Englishman Martin Hull. I came to the Philippines for the first time in 96 as a tourist and only surfed for uh, three days in Bel Air, which is in uh, Luzon. Um, then I returned to the Philippines for longer, for three months, and came to uh, Chagao for the first time. Uh, stayed here for two months of a three-month trip and then went home, earned some more money, and returned. Must be something that draws me here or keeps me here. Some foreigners, such as Pirate Pete, have even dropped permanent anchor here. I sailed past here. I came here without knowing anything about the surf. I just came here because it looked like beautiful islands. But the only reason tourism is here on any scale is surfing. But the surfing has put General Luna on the map. The wave of cloud nine has put General Luna on the world map. And the Philippines now is recognized as an international surfing spot. Yet another example is Walter Baskerville, a former member of the US Navy. Turning to God in the hopes of improving his situation, Walter became a missionary and came to spread the Christian faith among the natives of the island. The people that I'm around, the people that uh, I'm here with day to day, and also there in the church, and 
and around the island. Yeah, they're definitely interested in, in the work that uh, I'm doing here. And uh, the response is, that's the overwhelming thing. Um, my heart and my vision, I really felt for that, uh, that God impressed on my heart for these people uh, has been incredibly embraced. And um, that's so satisfying. It's so satisfying. Many missionaries never, uh, never experienced that. I've only been a missionary basically for a year. And it's just been incredible to see the, the things that uh, I really felt that were impressed in my heart come to reality, come to reality right before my eyes. where the barman sits. Like this, and you have the ice box so you can get the beers. You notice this? This is an important navigation piece. This is where the beer goes. You have to have the holder for your beer, and this one's go on the outside. That's the holders for the beer outside, so everybody doesn't drop their beer. Used to be my sitting, steering steer from here, but no more. I like to sit out now, so it goes faster. Ah, okay. Oh, I go outside the reef. I go, I've been around the island on the small boat. On the small boat. I've been around the island. It took a few days. I have to stop some places at night. It's a lot of miles around the island. And you're outside the reef. Oh, yeah, I often go outside. The ocean swell is what I love. That's where I, that's my profession for 16 years before I came here, sailing. Yeah, about 30, 38, 40, nearly 40 years of sailing, since I first started sailing, but no, living on a boat, I started living, just living on a boat with no land address about 20 years ago. This was my first land address for 20 years. I'm not looking to doing any ocean passages anymore. I've got seven children. I'm going to stay here and look after them. I was working for an insurance company and I think I left school at 16 and my expectation was oh, just to kind of get a job. I didn't have much ambition. And, uh, and then after a year of that, you know, it just began to kick in that I was uh, more intelligent than a lot of these people and that I just didn't want to just sit back and become that kind of person who doesn't do anything. And I just honestly just didn't do anything but just go to work and what kind of life is that and I, so I looked ahead and thought I can't carry on with this at all it made me miserable and as well as being miserable I took it out on other people and just became a person that I didn't want to be Before, I was involved in a lot of uh, uh, street culture, d drug culture, uh, and um, I had a couple of uh, bad experiences uh, on, on uh, LSD and uh, other drugs, too. I was doing many drugs at... at uh, at a, at a time and uh, literally almost killed myself um, like three or four times in a matter of a month practically killed myself on drugs and so I began to uh, seek 
truth. And I prayed. The waves here in the Philippines are very powerful. I don't think you're going to die unless it's a really, unless you get like a two or three wave hold down in very, very big conditions. But people have died in the smallest of conditions for inexplainable reasons, and it's mostly drowning of some sort. And uh, you know, and other people have died obviously in huge, huge conditions, being held down for two waves, you know, for 30 or 40 seconds. But I, I wouldn't say I've ever come close to death just once. In California, I was held down three waves, not all in succession. And the third one held me down for a long time. And yeah, I was worried, I was nervous, and I was struggling for breath. And I felt almost like I was fighting for my life under that third wave. That was my home for eight years. Eight years I used to take backpackers sailing all around Australia, Philippines, Hong Kong, Papua New Guinea. Eight years I sailed that. That's me being, uh, I have my beer. Yeah, my wedding. There's the mayor who you interviewed. He was the one to read the book. He was our, uh, you don't call him a priest, he was the uh, uh, official. I don't know, about a few years ago, I'm not sure. We tried it a few times, but it must have been oh, only four years ago. That's Morena when she was pregnant to uh, Samantha. So that one is seven years plus, eight years ago. Uh, what else we got here? Kids. There's kids. Kids. Here, it's not expensive to uh, have children and bring them up, but the mortality rate is very high as well. A lot of the children get respiratory diseases, uh, chest infections, and die before one year of age. So it's, that's why we have, when, when your child reaches one year of age, you have a very big party, which is the custom here. After that, the parties are smaller, but they want, first birthday is a big celebration for a child to live that long. If you go up to the cemetery here, you'll see that about 70% of the graves in the cemetery are only three feet long. They've got small boxes inside. It's all the small babies that die. I do not know the percentage, but I know it's quite high as far as per thousand. Uh, about population. The reason of that is that uh, we lack the cost of medicine so f so high now that uh, it seems beyond the rich. It has always been beyond the rich of the poor people. But that can be compensated because we pro if uh, some uh, there is a death of a child, we produce more. So no problem with that. The Philippines is not a popular place to come. People don't know what's here. The, the image in England anyway is of pedophiles and that's all. They just don't know. And so, so few people actually come here. 
you can have difficulties with them sometimes because of just behavioural differences and cultural differences. But on the whole, I, I would say the people on this island are extremely friendly. So for me, it's a perfect, peaceful place just to wait for waves and surf, so, yeah. This island, Shiragao Island, is uh, my main experience as far as going to a different, uh, a different um, society other than than uh, a quote unquote first world society. But what I've experienced here is uh, usually people, and people are, um, for the most part, uh, generally happy uh, and interested. Um, they're shy towards you. But um, for me, what I've, what I've, what has been one of my main focuses since I've been here is to try to um, learn the language spoken here as uh, much as possible. And I found that that really breaks a lot of the, the uh, difference within the cultures. Me as a Catholic, I can easily coexist with the Muslim. I can easily coexist with the Buddhist, considering uh, because of our Asian culture. We are a naturally friendly people. We look at people not in a commercial way, but as an incoming friend. That's the Asian culture. Not with antagonism, but with a friendly gesture. There was a saying by one of our great writers here, the Asian character is just like a bamboo. It bows wherever the wind blows. <clears throat> and when the storm is over, it stands again. With the bamboo, they get an insect inside them. It's called, uh, here we call it a bok bok. It's like a termite, but very small and they eat the bamboo. And I've poisoned the animals, and now I'm just filling up their holes so the paint will go on evenly, because the paint won't fill the hole properly. And uh, when they're fully painted, uh, the insects won't eat them again. <laughs> I can't put more epoxy. I tried to get a worker, I can't even get a worker. What? I was, I was really blessed uh, by some of the people here in the church, uh, in, in our local church, who, um, who literally took me in as their, as their own son. All the, the sons and daughters were the, were the same as far as their hospitality 
and always helped me to learn the culture here and helped me to grow. I've been really blessed by uh, the family who, who let me build on, on this land. The life that I've been leading of late is some really amazing moments. And then, whereas if I was leading what would be no more conventional lifestyle, girlfriend, living together, uh, and so on, would just be kind of happy, but never things being amazing. So it's definitely a different kind of life. Oh, I built this house about three and a half years, three and a half years, four years ago. Myself and two other carpenters. My design, six months. Six months, because a lot of the time was waiting for materials, waiting for the trees to be cut down in the hills, chopped up and brought down so as I could use it. You cannot get that anymore, legally, no. But you still can course in this country there's nothing such there's no, uh, nothing nothing that's very legal <laughs> there's nothing that isn't illegal that they won't break the laws about yeah you gotta know the right people and uh, not tread on anybody's toes and you can normally get away with things pay a bit of money here and pay a bit of money there you get away with most things You can see this island changing even in the one year that's passed since I was last here, in, in the sense that there are tourists coming now, tourists, who, who might go down and just have a look at Cloud Nine, but basically come here to laze on the nice beaches. And also, it's changing in, in the way that there's a disco now and that there's a couple of places, there's 7-Eleven, which is like a sing-along karaoke bar. Oh, that wasn't open last year, that's all come. So things are definitely changing. terrible. I don't even like talking about it. I can't listen to it. Uh, they're all into it. You put up with it occasionally. Mostly you steal right away. You've got to be very drunk to put up with karaoke listening to bad people sing what you used to like as good songs. The Westerners cannot influence us anymore because we have already been influenced by the radio, the television, the movies. They have been in here for quite some time already before the arrivals of these uh, tourists. So I would say that uh, not, much, not much influence has been uh, imposed on the people in this area. We are still the same people as it was before. Although I heard lately that uh, some already are starting to take some drugs, which is not so prevalent yet. 
still uh, <clears throat> within the containable uh, level. However, these things are brought uh, intermittently by, you know, white people trying to take in some marijuana, some shabu, if you call that shabu, whatever it is. But it's still on the containable uh, label. There is a very big drug problem in the Philippines. Very big drug problem with this um, synthetic drug they call shabu. Um, it's very addictive and it's used um, everywhere. It's everywhere around the Philippines. You'll notice a guy might appear pretty drunk, but a lot of the time they're not. They're, they're up to their eyeballs on this stuff. As it becomes a more popular area among the foreigners, my vision for General Luna itself is to keep the Christians here strong and, and growing in numbers. The island, though, has uh, many towns that are unreached as far as people don't have a daily place where or a weekly place where they can go and worship God. What I'm trying to do is set up churches in towns that don't have uh, places where they can worship. Hey, fellas. culture is uh, pretty unique. Yeah, I have a greater knowledge now that you can never understand it. It's basically how lazy they can be, is their culture. They're a damn lazy country. Their mentality is 24 hours. I don't think there's anybody here who's sold land to foreigners and has got uh, any of the money left. They, um, they get money in their pocket and they just spend it straight away. They don't think about tomorrow. It's only today that counts. Well, every Sunday, the government allows the people to have this uh, cut fight. The bet on that, it is a part of our national life. You take that away, and a lot of people will revolt against the government. So the government simply totally tolerates the gambling, Sundays. Uh, cut fighting has been with us since uh, the Spanish uh, conquistadores introduced uh, cut fighting in the Philippines and it has already remained, it has already been ingrained in our system as a people. They get all their friends together and they all have a drink and celebrate their winning. With the losers, basically they, uh, they just gamble their weekly salary every week. If next week they lose, they go to the winner's party, you know? So the money stays in the town and it just gets rotated. And the only winners are really the people who sell the beer at night. They gamble, they win, they lose. It makes no difference. They're gonna spend their money anyhow. As far as a normal, a normal Christian-based life, I'd say maybe 10% of 
the people here live a normal Christian life, maybe even less, maybe even less than that. But as far as being a Christian nation, um, it, uh, sometimes it just, it has no bearing at all on the effect of the people as far as a quote-unquote Christian nation. It may be called a Christian nation, but uh, the actions of the nation are, are definitely not, not uh, one of Christian, Christian nature of what the Bible teaches. Well, uh, actually, if you look at things and look at the map of the world, we as a Christian is an anomaly in this, uh, in the Asia, in the Far East. But somehow we have adapted already to that. We are surrounded by Buddhism and Muslims. You go up north, that's Thailand, that the prevalent uh, religion there is Buddhism, the China, which is Buddhist also. Vietnam, and our western side, and the south, you have uh, Indonesia and then Malaysia, which are Muslims. We are the only Christian in this part of the world. But somehow, that makes us no different from them. Our own culture has also been infused with, the, uh, with Catholicism, but basically, as a people, we are the same. I would say for the bulk of the people, there's there's no mess of jobs that's being created. Prices have gone up. They've got to tolerate foreigners, and there's just a lot of jealousy and resentment, I, I think. You know, it's not huge, but it's there, and it will grow. There's always two prices in the Philippines. Foreigner price and Filipino price. There's always that. It's very expensive compared to what it was. Everything has just gone um, through the roof with prices. Your daily vegetables, that's gone up a, a, a hell of a lot. Your vegetable prices, rice has gone up. Um, Beer has stayed very constant prices unless you go to the resorts, but in town you can still buy an eight peso beer. prices of prime commodities has not unusually gone up. Uh, still, uh, the, it has gone up, but it's not because of the arrival of the tourists, but because of the uh, national inflation, the money. We have to adjust the prices of, uh, let's say, for example, the fish in the market, considering that uh, there is really already a need to adjust it because the Philippine peso lately has lost uh, so much value in the open market. They, they call it in international economic terms the Asian meltdown, economic meltdown. That's the effect of that.
they're not businessmen here. They're not. Uh, they don't concentrate. Their, their their business is coconut trees, copra, fishing. But as to business ideas, everybody else is too damn lazy. Um, even at the school. Well, my kids do about 16 or 17 days a month at school. There's always an excuse. A female teacher won't go to the school and teach while she has her menstruation. So for four or five days, the children do nothing in the classroom because their teacher has her menstruation. I mean, it's... Uh, absolutely insane. This is the amount of schooling this, my children get in this school. Ridiculous. The longer I'm here in the Philippines, the longer I've been away from home, um, I, I don't think it's even possible to go back to a conventional life. It's not just the conventional life that I'm running away from now, it's almost home. That I'm thinking of, of after the Philippines, after Indonesia, going to Australia, try and earn a load of money there, and then just come straight back and just not go home. Going home just doesn't really interest me right now. There's just only friends and family that draw me home, and that's it. And if that's the reason you go home, I don't know. I, the minute I get home, I'll want to come away again. So I'm actually relatively content here. For me, uh, there's really no other alternative. The alternative is to what to fall back into what I've been through and, and uh, there's so much more reward out of out of living the way that God's Come on. Come on. designed me and supplied for my life. He's been faithful, I found, and um, so there's really no other alternative to to turn to. These men are interchangeable with any of the new settlers of General Luna. But it is through their experiences that the dilemma of the island is revealed. Each year, more tourists lay claim to the land for short periods of time. Others stay longer. As more and more people seek to escape the pressures of civilization, this idyllic beach with its white sand and perfect waves offers an escape from the problems of contemporary society. But the question remains, can paradise bear the burden? Thank you.